Hey, what's up, guys? This is Taya Valkyrie, La Huera Loca, and I will be coming to NWA 74 to be facing Camille, the Brick House, blonde versus blonde. Camille, good luck, honey, because you're going to need it. You've never faced anyone like me before, and I'm coming for that NWA Women's Championship. And you're listening to Battleground Podcast. What's up, you guys? Welcome into iHeartRadio's official wrestling podcast, the Battleground Podcast. And man, we are uh, pretty excited about an upcoming event that's happening. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my tag team partner, Eli. There he is, buddy. What's up? Hello. Is that that's the shirt we got at uh, the the Clarksville show, right? Or the Oak Grove? Um, Crockett Cup. Crockett Cup. Okay, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah, I was cool. just thinking about. That was five months ago. Can you believe that it's already like we're already done with the summer, pretty much? Like that. That is what's freaking me out. That and the fact that my kids are already in school right now. Oof. So I'm like, Oof. where has summer gone? Yeah, um. Wild. But uh, speaking of the NWA, NWA 74 is on its way. And of course, you can still grab tickets at NWATix.com. But today we have a very special guest on the show. And you know our track record on the show, right? Everybody that comes onto this show, uh, if they're going to wrestle for the title, they go on to win the title. It's a proven track record on this I mean show. This this is an indication. We interviewed Matt Cardona, and three days later, he was the new world champion. So, so let's bring our guest, Ty Valkyrie. It comes Woo! on the show right there. There she is. Are you Thanks guys for coming on the show? show? Is that what this is? <laughs> I think so. I mean, we have a pretty good track record of everybody that comes onto the show. It goes on like Eli said. You know, we we sit here and we talk to Cardona literally three days after we published that episode of Cardona. What do you know? He wins the NWA mm -hmm. championship. So, okay. um, all right i'm counting on you guys yeah. now you you being a belt collector you probably don't need a lot of help from us but exactly. every little help every little bit like all the positive energy and good vibes. yeah there you go there you go <laughs> so we're gonna put that positive energy out there so let me let's go ahead and start about start this thing uh what was it about the nwa and their women's division that made you decide that you wanted to bring your talents to an nwa ring well, I'd never wrestled there before, you know, so it was just like this whole other new experience that I was really looking forward to. And I have several friends who have worked uh, with the NWA and have had such positive experiences. So obviously La Buena Loca had to go and try it out herself. <laughs> yeah. Did you uh, did you get experience too much NWA growing up? Not really, to be completely honest. Sorry, why is my, my laptop or my phone is going off? I don't know. <laughs> People leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> no, like At I first didn't. I thought it was me. Phone. I was like, we're we're all looking around. I was yeah, like, I was like my phone. My I don't want to stop the interview. I'm like, what is that? No, <laughs> it's yeah, my stuff. it's my laptop. My texts are going through my laptop. Anyways, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't really experience a lot of NWA growing up. Really, in Canada, you know, it was Stampede Wrestling and uh, oh, yeah. WWF WWE. So that yeah. was mm -hmm. that was kind of it. But yeah. um, now, you know, I'm doing my research, and you know getting into it and doing my thing. And I'm really excited yeah. to be getting this championship opportunity for an extremely prestigious championship, such as it is the, you know, NWA women's championship, the Burke um, at NWA 74. So I think we need to add that championship to my little collection that I have. Your growing collection. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you're, you're synonymous with being around, incredible women's locker rooms from impact to all over the world. What has the atmosphere been like so far in the NWA locker room? Super positive. You know, you always kind of worry about that when you're going into these yeah. situations and like, mm -hmm. is everyone going to be mad because I'm here? Are they going to like mm -hmm. me? Is my style going to mesh well with theirs and stuff? Mm -hmm. But honestly, it was, there were so many familiar faces when I got to the NWA, you know, Matt and Chelsea are there. I got to be with Taryn Terrell, who I hadn't worked with in years since mm -hmm. Impact back in the day in Orlando when we were filming yeah. at Universe yeah. Studios, as, as well as the Hex and, you know, and also new faces like Kylan King. And, and so it was, it's really exciting. Everyone's been super positive and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just a good vibe. Yeah, and you, you mentioned Kylan King, man. I mean, talk about a girl that is, like, blowing up right now. You see her. She is everywhere. Mm -hmm. She's and legit. I, I, she's legit. She's, she's really talented. Um, imposing presence in the ring. I love that match that we had. It was the first time we'd ever wrestled 
we never trained together. We'd never anything. So, you know, that chemistry obviously came across. And I mean, I can't wait to, to wrestle her again for sure. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's going to be for the NWA Women's Championship. Yeah, she it, did. NWA 74. It's now, she, that tournament, you know? <laughs> now, she's one of the rare exceptions. We have to say, we did interview her before her match with Camille for the world title, and she did not come out. Get that negativity the, out of here. Bye. That, We're not putting that out there. We're but, bleeping that out. Just but, take that out. We didn't mention that. That was anymore. a different competitor. We're not talking, you know, all that. So, um, yeah. Uh, what... But I mean, but besides, I, I was about to, I was about to <laughs> add to that, and I just blanked. I don't even remember. We were talking about. Uh, it's been one of the. It's been one of those yeah, days. Yeah, That's she's right. blowing up. Yeah, yeah, she's. Uh, we talked to uh, what her CCW match in the. She had a cage match that got a lot of buzz. So uh, yeah, you, you guys had a very good. That was the uh, the number one contender match you guys yeah. had, right? That was yeah, that was a solid match. Uh, what do you think about the uh, studio TV uh, studio wrestling? Is that kind of like do you like the old school approach the NBA is well, presenting? Or? It was. I mean, they film at Skyway Studios, which is this place that I actually Nashville. Work. Yeah, mm -hmm. Nashville. Where, where in 2020, Impact filmed there for a you whole You basically year. lived there. Yeah, With yeah. no fans. <laughs> so I like, yeah, we lived there for a long time. Um, so that space itself was very familiar to me. But it was really weird to me, the studio setup, because it was it caught me off guard about how different it felt compared to other situations I'd been in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember I did like a podium interview and I was like, why am I so nervous right now? Because yeah. <laughs> like, it was like, so it just caught me off guard how different it felt compared to like stereo, you know, like the standard kind of style of filming wrestling, mm -hmm. but it was really fun because I mean, it's something different. Right. So yeah. mm -hmm. I'll take it. Absolutely. Um, I think you're the next question. Yeah, so we've been going I mean, off here. Yeah, <laughs> we've, just, we've just kind of been going all over the place. So besides experience, I mean, what does your style of fighting and wrestling bring to the NWA that might be missing? Well, obviously, I'm heavily influenced by the Lucha Libre style and all these kinds of uh, different styles that I've studied throughout my career. So I think that I bring that to the table just a little bit. You know, they don't have... Um, a Lucha or a style wrestler um, there right now, except for me. So I think that that's definitely what I bring to the table, but also I'm just adapting and being able to, to like use that and also adapt into like the style that's required for the NWA, which is different from other places. Yeah. Right. And you do have some um, star appeal, I would say uh, you're pretty well known. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> so uh, on the subject of all things NWA, um, the current NWA women's champion, uh, Camille, the brick house, as she's referred to, what stands out to you most about her as a defending champion, as you yourself are a defending champion with tons of belts uh, around your waist right now, what, what stands out about, or what even kind of bouncing off of that, do you remember the first time Camille kind of got in your radar and you're like, oh shit, or, you know, like, oh, she's going to be big. Like, do you remember any of that? I mean, I'm just fascinated by like strong confident beautiful women <laughs> i love it i love wrestling them i like watching them uh so i remember i think the first time i ever met camille was probably at a wrestlecade i want to say several mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. but it was just like such a brief interaction and so yeah like recently our first time wrestling was at an xbw show um here in california and then again in the tournament to crown the xbw women's champion who i am the xpw women's champion uh fault in that wound for, for, for camille to be watching this right now yeah. <laughs> uh, was, i just really i just think she's so cool and i think that uh not a lot of people not enough people recognize how how much she's grown and how passionate she is about this business she's been a fighting champion this entire time she's got us had a super long reign as nwa nwa is sorry nwa is women's champion uh so it's just it's really exciting for me to wrestle someone like her, you know, like I said, I'm fascinated by two bulls coming together and fighting. Yeah. It, so. And I think you guys are, you know, I'll use your term bulls. Uh, I would never call a woman a bull, well, but you, you know, know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> But, you know, even though you two are, it's the different styles. Like you said, like you're definitely more uh, Lucha. You, know, you do have more high flying in your your uh, repertoire. She's more, I guess, maybe ground based, more strength. So, I mean, I still think you have the differences there. So it's just like, ugh. it's kind of one of those matches where you're kind of like, why haven't we seen this world title match before now? You know, like, right. where, what have we been waiting on? You know, but anyways, um, 
Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. But yeah, so NWA 74, it's August 27, 28, live from the Chase in St. Louis. Of course, you can grab tickets, nwatakes.com. You can also uh, watch that pay-per-view on Fight, so uh, definitely be watching out for that. We'll probably be giving away a code soon for that on our social media. So, you know, Camille has held that title for a very long time, and it seems like everybody comes in and they're like, I'm going to dethrone Camille, and I'm going to be the one that beats her, and I'm going to take the title for I have the feeling that the, the, the wind of change is about to happen now that you've stepped into that number one contenders match. So mm-hmm. without, I guess, spoiling too much, because I know Camille watches this. Hi, Camille. Uh, what are your keys to success to be the one to finally to, uh, to dethrone Camille? I think it just comes from experience. It comes from, you know, over a decade of, of working everywhere versus everyone, being the longest reigning knockouts champion in hi- all of history, being the longest reigning AAA champion in all of history you know i think that that's my advantage and that's what i'm bringing you know to nwa 74 so um i will be the one to dethrone her i can't wait for her to you know shine that belt up for me and for me to take it home to the west coast well we are belt collectors as you can see Um, as you can see we like to collect the belts every now and then mine are going in shelves i haven't built yet so you know typical And you guys are getting like this i I painted this wall yesterday so you guys are very nice oh that's awesome (laughs) very nice mine is just there's a window and there's a curtain behind me and these are just (laughs) less boring i always felt like it looked like gray or something i think the i think the red and then the beetlejuice curtains i think they they look good i think they pink it's like a pinkish oh it is a pink okay Oh. Or something? Yeah. Ah, okay. Barbie vibe. Barbie yeah, vibe. yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, okay, so we're belt collectors. Um, you've become quite the belt collector, not only currently, but throughout your career. Um, do you plan on defending the Burke around the world if you're the next person to hold that? Absolutely. Why not? I have been defending my other championships quite regularly, and I, I plan to do that the same with the Burke. Boom. Easy. <laughs> I mean that that's the that's the cool thing about it is like you know every time we've talked to somebody that has a title they're like we're we're gonna be a fighting champion if, even if they're going up I mean going up against somebody that's the, that's the best response we're gonna be a fight I'm gonna be a fighting champion and I mean there's something behind it when you show up to an event and I'm putting this out in the universe so you go to an event and say it's a triple a show and it's like here she comes at the accolades of you and NWA women's champion as well I mean, that's got to be something cool to add to the resume, right? Absolutely. You know, such iconic women have held this championship over the course of its existence. And I just want to be added to that list. So I'm really excited for you guys to see what we do. And of course, it's also kind of fun that you probably, uh, this is, would this be like the first belt that you've had that has a photo of yourself inside the belt? It would be, yes. (laughs) Do you get to now, do you get to pick that photo out? Or is it just kind of my next question? Are we going to have the puppy in there or? Actually, yes, just put Presley's face right (laughs) on. There you go. There you go. There you go. That would be, I mean, that might make you fight more. You know what I mean? You're defending. His honor. There are, yeah. So that might, you know, yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, this one, this is always a fun one. This is for the the IWC, the Internet Wrestling Community. They always have the questions. They always have things oh that my, they oh want to know. God. This is not going to be a bad one. This is not going to go somewhere where you think it is. Do you think that we can get you and John to face Sammy and Tay for the AAA Mixed Tag Team Titles? I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, all this, I think all it would our look- universes exist together, right? The multiverse of wrestling right now is insane. So uh, why not? I mean, we have so much experience in mixed tag wrestling. I don't think anybody has as much experience as we do in mm-hmm. all different styles. You know, when we did it on Lucha Underground, when we did it in AAA, when we've done it on the indies. So absolutely, Tay Conti, Sammy, you guys are newlyweds. We've been married four and a half years. <laughs> Try yeah. me. Try me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll well, buy it. I'll buy that pay per view once it's announced. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's like um, when I was just talking. I'm one of those that kind of like got back into wrestling. Lucha Underground was that's what got me back into wrestling. To be honest, um, I was uh, flipping through El Ray or the TV, and El Ray stopped, and I was like, "What is this?" And I hadn't watched wrestling in probably ten years, and. Um, I don't think you and John had a match, but y'all came out and I was like, well, I recognize those guys. And then I, I saw, I don't even remember who it was, but it was one of the craziest matches I still have ever seen to this day. And it Luke was just Underground crazy. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, you know, I, I know the, you know, it kind of went the way it went, but I mean, for a lot of people, I mean, like 
it, that was incredible wrestling programming, you know, and uh, the way it was filmed. And I mean, it looked different. And, you know, I kind of wish that, you know, a, I don't know, big company with a lot of money was behind it. Cause I mean, I really, I, I loved that program. It was really, really good. Was it, would you say that that was generally a positive experience looking back? Oh, yeah. on it, I feel like anyone you talk to that was on Lucha Underground, I would say like that was one of the most fun experiences and most fun places to work. I also just think because all of us at that time were really just kind of breaking it through. So it was kind of mm -hmm. this first big opportunity for several of us. Think about Shane Strickland. Think about me, mm -hmm. Brian Cage, Phoenix, Penta. Like all of us were for the first time, like really kind of, you know, being recognized for something and on mm -hmm. a bigger platform. And it was just so much fun. Yeah. We had yeah. so much fun. It was absolute chaos and mayhem and I loved it. <laughs> Well, and I, I think so where I was going with that was as I, I so you and John tag team against somebody and it was a mixed and it was like you were the literally you were the first woman I've ever seen that I can remember that fought a male in a wrestling ring. And it was like real. It wasn't like, a you know, you saw I don't know. I'm trying to think like Jeff Jarrett hit somebody with a guitar once and that was like you were actually fighting. And I was like, well, that's different. And I mean, that just opened up an entire world of, you know, Lucha and, you know, the, the, the intergender stuff. And I mean, like, there's so many storytelling cap options in, in that realm. And, you know, I, I think for the companies that do kind of embrace it, it just is a different way to tell stories, you know? Yeah. And I feel like for all those people that have such issues with intergender wrestling, I mean, they would talk about that and, you know, be like, I can't believe Lucha Underground is doing that. I'm like, listen, guys. If you can believe Catwoman, Catwoman and Batman are fighting each other, then you can believe that in this crazy underground fight club <laughs> where there's demons and dragons and people coming back from the dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, guys. Like, yeah. Just well, and, like play, into, play with us. Give into the magic. Right. Well, and, and here's some more shocking news. The men and the women train at the same places. Yeah. Like, it's the same schools. It's the same teachers. Like, they're... Yeah. We're Anyways. fully capable. <laughs> Um, speaking of, you know, we, we just, uh, we've been talking kind of all over the place, but, um, what has your return to impact wrestling been like? I mean, you've already held gold since you returned. I mean, what has it been like going back to, to impact in that locker room? Fabulous. You know, <laughs> I, I, I never left them on bad terms. Like those people are my family, Gail and Scott, like when I was released, were like the first people that messaged me and called me and just being like, you're going to be okay. Don't freak out. You know, because I was having these kind of like, oh, my God, my life is over, ah. you know, yeah. but like going back there, it was just it was it's exactly how I remember it. And everyone's so positive. Everyone's having fun. All the women get to be showcased a lot. You know, you'll see multiple women's matches on a pay-per-view and things like that. So it's it's just been really special. And obviously to be sharing the screen with someone like Rosemary and now Jessica, people who I've, you know, worked with for so many years and we just all have such a great friendship and respect for one another mm -hmm. yeah and it's i mean you see everything that's been happening right now and it's I, I feel as if and we've talked about this numerous times women's wrestling is actually starting to be way better than some of the guy wrestling because before yeah. back, because <laughs> you know growing up as a wrestling fan like i grew up in the attitude era women's wrestling either got like three to five minutes or it was brawl and panty matches or it was this stuff but now you've got you know, women headlining pay-per-views and going back to Impact, you had the first ever Queen of the Mountain and then you had the first ever Women's X title match mm -hmm. and uh, uh, or Ultimate X. And you, you see the tide is shifting and a lot of people are saying, hey, the girls can go just like the dudes, if not better. I yeah. mean, I've been saying that for a long time. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's well, always just the, like, it. Wrestling, women's wrestling, wrestling in general has changed so much over the last decade, really. Um, but I still think for women, we still have a ways to go. We still are going to be fighting for our spots. We're still going to be fighting to have one, you know, a, a match on an indie show, which I think is insane when you come across an indie show and there's no women on the card. I think that mm -hmm. that's disgraceful in 2022. You know, we're trying to fight to get paid. We're trying to fight, to, you know, for all these kinds of things. But it's great to see that we're moving in a positive direction and it's, it's great that there are these companies like Impact, like an NWA, uh, like MLW that are allowing women to have other platforms to perform. Yeah. And you're even seeing a turn with a lot of the indie stuff too. I mean, I, I'll, we will be at shows and, 
you know, you'll have the tro trolls. Oh, you're fat, whatever. And then you have people behind, like, shut the fuck up. Like, I mean, you have people shutting that stuff down yeah. now. And, you know, like, you know, girls were boring. And then they're just like, this is awesome. Like, you know, they're, they're yeah. the crowd. Are well, starting I mean, that whole, like, trolling BS stuff, you know, women, we and men deal with it, honestly, both, both mm -hmm. of us do online. But uh, I definitely think that we deal with it more. Oh, because 100%. Uh, people 100% of the time like have something to say about how we look or what we how we talk or what we said or like what we're wearing and like just watch the wrestling okay? yeah and, that's what well, we're gonna do. and I just think it's unfair how the girls seem to be like uh, crucified for like botches and stuff like bro botches happen all the time all I've the seen, time I've seen legends botch stuff I mean you know what I mean like give them a break you know um this this is not related to anything we just said. I just thought of it. So, um, you know, we've asked uh, everyone from Billy to I think we might even ask Tony Khan this. I don't remember, but we've asked a bunch of people. So there was a back in the 80s, there was a, like a super card and there was a bunch of the terror toys that got together and they tried to go against Vince and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean, do you think there could be a super show nowadays like a Impact, Ring of Honor, a you know, AW, I mean, everyone that wants to play in the sandbox, just have a big, huge super show. And just, I mean, I think that that would be amazing because it allows for dream matches that maybe people had thought, or it allows for dream matches that maybe people thought were impossible. Yeah. Uh, so I would be absolutely open to doing something like that. I feel like that's, what's so cool about the wrestling industry right now is the fact that we are able to play in all the sandboxes yeah. and, we are able to have these dream matches. Like the way that I'm able to be on MLW, on Impact, you know, and the NWA and, and be in all these places at once, you know, that used, that wasn't the case even three years ago. You couldn't do that. So very short time. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's really different now. So it is very cool. So if there was, if there was a show like that, like 100% count me in. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you, you'd have most of the belts. I mean, you'd have to be there. So yeah. Yeah. yeah you just have to have a gauntlet match. And it's just like yeah. every 15 minutes, yeah. you get a new competitor for whichever belt. And you kind of saw a little bit of this, this, uh, this, Matt, this show that Eli's talking about with, uh, with Ric Flair's last match because you had everybody there. And I'll tell you what, I was there in that building when that happened. And that, uh, that triple A match tore the roof off of that house. Like I was sitting there and I was like, good luck following that to whoever has to come after this. Because I mean, you sit there and like, I was like, I, there was a guy next to us. He's like, who are these guys? Like, I don't want to watch this. And I was like, trust me, just you're yeah. going to want to sit yeah. down and yeah, watch yeah. this. Just watch. Yeah. I kid you not, not one person was sitting down during that match. Yeah. Not one person. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I mean, I just got to wrestle Taurus last week in Verado de Escandalo in the main event with the Lucha Brothers. And uh, yeah, like they're all super, super talented. Bandito, Laredo Kid. Like, it's just, I could go on and on. I gush about those guys all the time. They're, they work extremely hard. They're extremely talented. They're doing the damn thing, you know? And they're yeah. trying to get out there. And I'm, I'm really happy for them and that more and more Mexican talent is able to be seen and get respect for what they're doing because what they're doing is pretty damn cool. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And, and sitting there watching that, and, and you could see it. And I would, you know what? Maybe, maybe Billy, if you're watching this, I'd love to see some more luchador wrestling in the NWA. I mean, I think you could bring that in there. I mean, you, you've mm -hmm. kind of, you've, Light lit that uh, that fire under Billy right now mm -hmm. with your style of wrestling. Maybe maybe we could get Bandito in there. I mean, I think Bandito could look good with a ten pound of gold around his waist. You know, yeah, and some of the women as well. You know, let's let's get Lady Shani out here. Let's mm -hmm. get uh, Lady Flammer out here. Like all those the new sexy star. Everybody, you know, like those women are also you know need some, need some love. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that they're super talented, and I think that they would be very successful at any of these companies in the states but they can't go against you when you win that nwa women's championship right they have to no, just kind of stay spot. at the bottom yeah <laughs> they can go after the women's tag team titles for right now y'all can have that so can't take well, your title away do you, do you think you could talk john into coming over and you know him world champ you world champ like i mean why not we were world champs together at impact i mean so. repeat it. and then you know you've got a built-in feud with the cardonas because they want those belts so then Oh, yeah. Oh, Matt and Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's always kind of a fun question. Uh, where do you see yourself when you finally hang up your boots? Uh, what do you think you're going to do after wrestling? Do you think you'll be involved with the with the business still? Or, you know, we've, we, uh, we know Locust kind of started out uh, 
I think during the pandemic. Did you launch during the pandemic or did it come out yes, right before? Yes, I okay. during the pandemic out yeah. of boredom and just needing to be creative. Yeah, yeah. So you got a lot of stuff going on. But yeah, what do you what do you think about your post wrestling career? Well, um, I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm always going to be involved in wrestling somehow. I'm not really sure what that would be if it's like a producer or agent or something like that. Um, I also just think that I really, right now, I'm super into real estate. <laughs> that seems so, to be the move that everybody's doing right now. Yeah, and like, I'm like constantly on Zillow. It's horrible. Uh, <laughs> just I really want to, you know, have, I, it, my dream would be to, you know, have a bunch of rental properties and be managing all of that and just mm -hmm. kind of expanding my empire and playing Monopoly in real life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, way to do it. I also really want to write my book about my life because I think that my life is, crazy and interesting and i think that people think they know me but they really have no idea <laughs> just stuff like that and i'm continuing to you know write movies with john and we have our um the iron chic massacre is finally hitting film festivals this fall Very yes nice. Very uh, nice. so that is a super exciting i already have a concept for it and an idea for the next movie i want to write so i mean i just i love dabbling in everything and anything and everything so you never know <laughs> nice Sounds like a, a very busy uh, life plan after this. So uh, I, we don't want to take up too much of your time, but I know we're here to talk about NWA 74 again. It's live from the chase, St. Louis, NWATix.com, August 27th and 28th. And, of course, you're going to be rolling through Nashville after those weekends of taping to do some stuff at Skyway Studio, which I, I'm pretty sure once I get everything situated, everybody that's watching this and listening to this, if you're in Nashville, we will probably be giving away tickets to those Nashville tapings. But uh, before we let you go, uh, is there anything you want to say to people that are watching this, including Camille? Uh, you can say whatever you want. This is your opportunity to get whatever's off your chest, whatever's on your mind. You, the floor is all you. Ooh, well, Camille, you know, the battle of the blondes, NWA 74, you know, you've been pretty lucky so far, but you have never faced someone like me. The brick house, La Wera Loca. It's on, baby. Boom. I mean, and that was factual too. You stated a fact. She has never faced anyone like you. So <laughs> I like, I like my promo promos with facts. I like that. There it yeah. is. Uh, so real quick, where can uh, people keep up with you online? Like where's the best place you want people to go to? Like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, MySpace. Um, oh, MySpace. <laughs> yeah. uh, Friendster, if you still got it. Uh, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the tie of Valkyrie as well as TikTok, but I I'm the worst TikToker in the entire world. Uh, Facebook, Same. Facebook.com slash Ty Valkyrie. And for my weekly blogs, I write blogs every single week about all my travels and my life in general and all my BTS, exclusive photos, videos, whatever. You can go to TyaXO.com. Boom. Well, there it is. Taya, we're looking forward to hearing them say, and new nwa women's world champion come uh nwa 74 in august and it's been an honor to have you on the show and we're looking forward to getting you back on once you win that gold yeah once i have that over my shoulder <laughs>